Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this lecture is going to be on an intro to energy. Um, since this will be one of our first ones that we'll do, I'll walk you through kind of the expectations. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, you'll be taking three or more bullet points worth of notes from this. Sometimes these will be really short, that's why we only ask for three. This one will be a little bit longer, so you should probably have more than three bullet points. Uh, you will be expected at the end to write a one to two sentence summary. And then if there are any follow-up questions posted either on our website or on Canvas or whatever uh, platform we're using, you need to do those follow-up questions and they're usually a Google form. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is on an intro to energy. So we're gonna look at what is energy? Like are these examples? So our working definition of energy is the ability to cause a change in motion, temperature, or position. Now, uh, working definition just means it's an easy way to think about it. It's not the official definition. It's just something that's easy to think about. It's kind of like a placeholder um, until we get an official definition. Now, uh, like I said, the energy, the working definition is the ability to cause a change in motion, temperature, or position. Now in physics, energy is not a personality trait. So I know some days it might be really hot and you're like, oh man, I feel like one of these guys right here where you're just like, I have no energy today. Or some days you might feel like you have a little bit more energy. On both those days, according to physics, you probably have almost the same amount of energy. Um, so it's not a personality trait. It's not a feeling. Um, we can talk about that as uh, energy as related to like feelings and personality traits, but that is not physics. So in this class, we won't be talking about um, energy as how you are feeling. It'll be related to other um, aspects of the world. Some common types of energy um, are nuclear energy, thermal, electrical, magnetic, light, mechanical, and chemical. Uh, these categories aren't fixed. In fact, many of these actually get combined depending on who you're asking. I'll quickly go through some of them and then we'll go more in depth on thermal and mechanical uh, later in this lecture. So nuclear energy, first one, deals with energy stored between uh, the particles in the nucleus of an atom. So when you split an atom apart or fuse two atoms together, that releases nuclear energy. Some examples of that are like a nuclear bomb or a nuclear power plant splitting atoms to release energy. Uh, the sun actually fuses atoms to cause energy to be released, and that's also nuclear energy. Thermal we'll go more in depth with later. Uh, electrical energy, um, just dealing with electricity or charges, uh, electrical charges in this case, um, related to magnetic energy. Oftentimes these will be combined and it'll just be electromagnetic um, is what we'll talk about in terms of the energy for that. Uh, magnetic, obviously just dealing with magnetism. Now light um, can be thought of as a separate type of energy. So uh, light, like the light we see, but in physics, we actually mean more than just the light we see. There's actually types of light we can't see like infrared and x-rays. We'll talk more about that later. Um, technically light is actually a form of electromagnetic energy, but I put it separate here just so that you can think of it a little bit separately. Mechanical energy we'll go more in depth with later. Um, it doesn't deal with robots. It's not quite what we mean by mechanical energy. More on that later though. Uh, the last example we have is chemical uh, energy. Um, that's the energy stored between molecules um, in something. Uh, this actually relates to food and other things. So as your body breaks apart the molecules in food, it releases chemical energy um, and turns it into thermal or something else that you're doing. All right, so that's a quick overview of some common types of energy. Um, let's go more in depth on mechanical energy now. So mechanical energy is actually an umbrella term. Uh, what I mean by that is kind of like how uh, the term quadrilateral or uh, is a um, umbrella term for many different types of shapes with four sides. Uh, mechanical energy is an umbrella term for many different types of energy. Um, specifically, Mechanical energy is the energy from movement or position, um, but oftentimes we'll break apart like what type of movement it is or position relative to what. We're going to talk about three of them this year. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is kinetic energy, which is the energy of movement or motion. Um, so something with kinetic energy is moving. Um, the faster you move, the more kinetic energy you have. So Superman and the Flash have tons of kinetic energy right here. Uh, the slower you move, the less kinetic energy you have. Um, kinetic energy is based on a little bit more than just speed, but we'll talk more about that later this uh, year. 
The next type of mechanical energy we're going to talk about is gravitational potential energy. So it's uh, energy that's stored because you have like height above the ground. So here this kid uh, just jumped off the diving board and they have height above the ground. And so there's energy stored in this height in which they could fall. Um, the person doesn't have to be about to fall. So if he was standing over here and like nowhere near unstable or about to fall, he would still have gravitational potential energy. Uh, because he has some energy stored in his height above the ground. Um, now, if you think on a global or sorry universal scale, this might be energy stored between planets that are attracting each other too. Um, but here, for most of us, it's just energy stored because we have height above the ground. Uh, the last type of mechanical energy we're going to talk about is elastic potential energy. Uh, this is energy stored because something has either been stretched or squished. Uh, in other words, it has either been compressed or stretched is the other way to think about that. Now, both of these, elastic potential energy and gravitational potential energy, have that word potential in them or potential energy. Uh, potential energy just means energy that is stored. So anytime you hear the word potential energy, it just means it's energy that's not quite like showing up yet, but it's there, it's stored kind of like in a battery of sorts, but um, it's potential. It's not quite being used or activated yet. So that's a quick recap of uh, mechanical energy. It's an umbrella term. Three common types of mechanical energy are kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic energy. Again, something can have mechanical energy if it has any of these types of energy. All right, the last type of energy we're going to talk about is thermal energy in this case. Uh, thermal energy is the energy due to heat or warmth. Um, so if you, for example, rub your hands together, that friction between your hands actually causes kinetic energy to turn into thermal energy. If something's glowing red hot, it has thermal energy. Uh, the water here obviously has thermal energy, so does the fire, etc. So just some examples of it. Um, so real fast, think about this statement. You probably heard it in middle school, but energy cannot be, maybe pause the video, see if you can think of it. Energy cannot be, all right, the answer is created or destroyed is the phrase you often hear. Um, this idea is called conservation of energy. Another way to think about this is just that the total amount of energy in a system stays the same. So uh, if we don't have any energy being added to a system or taken away from a system, the total amount stays the same. Meaning if you know there was 100 units of energy before, then afterwards there's gonna be 100 units of energy. Um, this is handy because sometimes when we think we've quote unquote lost a little bit of energy, we can track it down and figure out where it went. It's kind of like if uh, you went to the grocery store and you bought something and they gave you five pennies, you put it in your pocket and you walked home and when you got home you only had four pennies in your pocket you know that that last penny didn't just magically disappear somewhere along the way it maybe fell out when you weren't paying attention the same thing happens with energy sometimes we lose a little bit of energy quote unquote um, in other words it just goes places where we weren't paying attention um, now because of this idea that energy is conserved just like your penny if you really wanted to you could retrace your steps and track down where it went um, conservation of energy means, like I said, that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change forms. So for example, chemical energy stored in food might turn into motion. Um, uh, the radiant energy shined down by the sun might turn into chemical energy through photosynthesis. Chemical, en chemical energy stored in gasoline might turn into motion from a car burning it. Uh, electrical energy might turn into thermal with an electric stove. So we've got this idea that just because the total stays the same doesn't mean it has to look the same all the time. Um, and in fact, since energy cannot be created or destroyed, it actually changes in one of two ways, or sometimes both at the same time. Uh, the first is it's transferred from one object to another. Uh, the second I just talked about is it's transformed from one type to another. Notice the name form in there, or the word form in there. So kind of like transformers, it's changing form. Um, so you think about a transformer changing from a truck into a robot. Energy might change from chemical into uh, kinetic, or from uh, magnetic into electrical, or things along those lines.
let's go over those examples a little bit more. Um, so one example of a transfer would be like if we have a billiard ball, so the cue ball here, it, it comes in and it hits this other one. Um, and so its kinetic energy gets transferred to uh, billiard ball B. Um, so here it no longer has any energy or movement, um, kinetic energy that is, uh, but B got some. And so it didn't just magically start moving or appear out of nowhere. Uh, it received that energy from someplace else. So sometimes when things look like they spontaneously gain energy, that is usually a sign for us to look at uh, if something was transferred at somewhere along the way and we didn't realize it. So energy transfer, when energy moves from one object to another. Energy transformation is when energy changes from one type to another. A common example would be like this ball up here on top of the hill has gravitational potential energy. It's energy stored in its height above like ground level. And then as it rolls down the hill, gravity turns that potential energy into kinetic energy. And so then it has kinetic energy. So energy transformation is energy changing from one type to another. That'll be important that you understand the difference between transfer and transformation. So if you need to use some flashcards, study, etc. That's it for this one. Make sure you have at least three or more bullet points worth of notes. Uh, go ahead and write a one to two sentence summary of that entire lecture. Uh, and if there are any follow-up questions on uh, the Google form or on a Google form, go ahead and do those follow-up questions. Uh, and then just for reference, here are the image credits, the first set of them, and there are a few more on the next slide.